In the palm of my hand, I hold the secret to life itself. A repository of cultural and biological stories, sharing a memory of the past to evolve a vision for the future. I hold a seed in my hand and in my heart, as do all of you. Like us, seeds come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors. The largest seed in the world grows on a tropical fan palm called coco de mer. This seed is 12 inches long and weighs up to 40 pounds. The smallest seed in the world grows on an orchid plant. These seeds are often smaller than a speck of dust. At first glance, a seed may seem easy to forget, so minuscule and insignificant, but seeds are limitless. They are miracles, tiny units of energy that make up our very existence. More than, tw more than 2,000 years ago, more than 15,000 years ago, our ancestors of this earth came from far away and they planted seeds. They planted seeds into the earth and from this civilization, and from, from this beautiful foundation, a civilization emerged. At one point, we forgot how to ask questions and started to search for answers. Navigating the world strictly through the eye of our mind rather than the compass of our heart. Soon the curtains parted, and a new show cast with saints of separation bombarded a world so carefully designed, shifting circles into lines, rewriting the history of time. Walls were built, rules were defined, and this is when we began to climb. Rather than participating in the life systems that sustain this planet, humans began to assemble the very own. This superficial world of society sits upon a disguised earth and has drained the biosphere, all for the worth of perceived fallacies, reinforced by an insatiable hunger for greed only knowledge can feed. Through this lens of progress, we have come far, mining wounds and scraping scars to conquer a region, a resource, a planet. Now our sights are set on the moon and Mars. Instead of dissociating from the earth and reaching for the next habitable planet, we need to sink back down and plant our roots within the ground. More than 1,000 years ago, Polynesian voyagers embarked on a quest across the Pacific Ocean. Like seeds, they planted themselves within our island archipelago and after generations of adaptation, found their specific niche within the island ecosystem. In this way, they were no different from the birds and trees and other living organisms that once came from afar to inhabit our island home. We are all seeds, planted in the garden of our island earth, floating on the sea of the universe. As seeds, we begin life cradled in a coat of protection, tiny packages full of mysteries. We are born in the dark with an inherent inclination to reach for the light and root down into potential to become something unimaginable. But this potential can be hindered without an adequate environment to germinate in. So many seeds stay dormant retaining their gifts from the surrounding world, not thriving, but merely surviving. Today, we live in a society full of dormant seeds. For how can seeds grow when chaos controls our climate, fear manipulates our mind, and modern life provides little time to explore such a rhyme? We are dormant seeds. In order to grow, we need food, water, shelter, and air, but aside from these essential elements, it does not matter what exists externally. What people think and how they act cannot be controlled. All that matters is the environment internally. For if we are able to accept ourselves, not in the name of past actions, but in the frame of the present moment, a journey of growth has already begun. How many of you have been told that 
In order to change the world, you have to change yourself. Show of hands. Quite a few of you. Me too. I am here today to tell you the exact opposite. In order to change the world, you do not need to change yourself. You need to be yourself. But what does it mean to be yourself? The fact is, it's impossible to be otherwise, as everyone else is already taken. To be yourself is simply to be, to experience life with awareness of self. Now, as soon as we arrive on Earth, we begin questioning the world, and it is this exploration that continually shapes our creation. We smile, we laugh, we cry, and then, of course, as soon as we can talk, we ask why. And then after a few years of being told to sit up straight and brush your hair, we're told how to think, how to dress, how to act, and whether or not to care. Once we are taught black from white, right from wrong, and day from night, it suddenly feels as if we're expected to have all the answers. This is when we start living somebody else's story. I was around the age of 10 when I noticeably started to try on various projections of myself that didn't necessarily fit. This was around the same time when pieces of a planetary puzzle were joining in my mind, which included the sharp images of social injustice, mass starvation, climate change, environmental degradation. I felt like I was an alien to my own species, alone and afraid of what I could become. Then, the only place I felt safe to be was under the umbrella-like canopy of strong, towering trees in a park or on a forest trail. I would sit at the base of a trunk and think to myself, I could be anything else, a flower, a bee, a rock, a flea. All I wanted was to feel free, to escape the burden of humanity. In the beginning, I was playing a game of hide-and-go-seek, but at some point, I lost myself. I became numb to the pull of my heart, deaf to the voice of my body, and defined by the story within my mind. After this time, I, I started to see things very differently. I was living the answer to another person's question rather than embracing myself in its entirety as the only answer to the question of my life. Life is one big question, one big mystery, playing out amongst infinite possibilities. We exist in the unknown, an undescribable space, an undiscovered place, like the depths of the sea for those who do not dive in. It is only dark and empty. We are as vast and as infinite as the world in which we live, but as seeds, we have wrapped ourselves in a coat of rules and beliefs to contain our limitless potential so that we may feel safe and in control. These coats of protection are costumes in a theatrical play of society, obscuring the lines between lies and reality, a line only you can redefine. We all have the ability to speak off script and break free from this made up reality. The question is whether or not we will choose to do so. Seeing as though beginning to grow means exposing yourself to the uncertainty of the unknown. Today, our society goes to great lengths to escape and avoid any ounce of pain or discomfort. Such avoidance keeps us collapsed within the cage of our seed coat, unwilling to stray from the comfort of what we know. The majority of us have become so addicted to being in the know that we have completely disregarded our own knowing. We have lost touch with ourselves and we have lost trust in ourselves. Because of the current state of the world, we don't want to ask ourselves big questions because we don't want to be responsible for answering them. This means we'd be forced to look back and ask why, look into the mirror and ask who, and look into the future to ask what if. Yes, this journey of questioning and reflection can be painful, but if throughout history these questions were never asked, Nothing would have changed. 
I'm not telling you to go out into the world and find yourself an answer. You are the answer. And as seeds, it is the process of questioning that makes you look inward to acknowledge and unpack all parts of the world beneath your skin, which peels back and cracks your seed coat of protection, however thick or thin. Still curled pale and green like the sprouts in a garden, you emerge from the soil of dormancy to welcome a world unforeseen created through your lens of questioning. When a seed finally unfolds out of its rigid container to reach its roots into the ground and stretch its shoots towards the heavens, its future is at the mercy of the outside world. It could be eaten or stepped on, It could drown in a flood or burn in a fire. But the only way to grow into a tree is to embrace the vulnerabilities of being a tender green seedling. In a garden, plants, animals, and elements interact with one another in a never-ending cycle of life, death, and rebirth, creating a balanced and interconnected system of reciprocity and abundance, which is of stark contrast when compared to the narrative of scarcity present within society. In the garden of our island earth, some would argue we are weeds, but I believe we are unsprouted seeds. I am a seed, you are a seed, we are all seeds. Seeds of love, seeds of hope, the seeds of peace. To grow, I would encourage you all to do what our ancestors did thousands of years ago, plant a seed, The simple, tangible task of planting a seed in the soil roots you in the moment, connects you to the matrix of all living things and allows you to awaken, becoming aware of what makes your heart sing. Seeds reflect a promise, a promise of growth and expansion that you can nurture through asking yourself big questions. This is a promise that has passed the test of time. And it is a promise that there is hope for tomorrow and hope for our future. It is a promise we truly need right now. So in the words of Howard Thurman, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Thank you.